everyone. Welcome to the, the first episode. Hello, everybody on the internet. This is Cress TV from Crestron. I am your host, Neil Fluister, and this is the first of many regular episodes we're going to be putting out on the channel with some great insights and behind the scenes news and updates, not only from us here at Crestron, but from the industry as well. We've got analysts joining us, we've got our partners and many other people that will be coming on. And if you want to come on, hit us up in the comments. Tell us. If you are new here, and you must be, because this is episode one, please like and subscribe, share to your friends, and tell them that this is the place to be. Um, now, if you may recognize me. I've done this before. Um, did a little show uh, in a previous role. Um, and this is, a, is going to be my regular home. On this show, we're going to be talking all about return to the office and uh, wireless content and wireless collaboration. We got some great announcement coming up from Crestron, but I'm joined by some uh, industry greats, uh, let's say, and I want to bring my first uh, guest out to talk to you and just to go over the opportunity because I've been away for nine weeks. Uh, I've been doing the garden, uh, so uh, I need to fill myself in and fill you in on what's been going on. So let's cross over and bring out our first guest, uh, Craig Durr from Wade House Research. Hello, Craig. How are you doing? <laughs> I'm doing well, Neil. How are you? I, I didn't realize I was first in queue. Okay, are, good. <laughs> you are, yes, absolutely. And welcome to the first episode of Crest TV. It's great to have you on. This is an honor. And this this is out on the interweb, right? This is, I can go on the line and get it, right? You can, absolutely. So no swearing. Uh, but yes, you. Well, this is going to be out on the internet. So uh, yes, thank you for uh, coming on. So I've been, no, as I say, go on. Oh, I say it's great. You know, I've been watching the shows that you've done in the past, obviously, um, you know, with other uh, technology solutions or whatever. But I love the way you bring a great personal feel to what we're doing here and and the banter. I mean, you didn't introduce me on the green. green no, we, don't, we haven't got the green room yet. So we're working on that. Again, this is episode one. Okay. Uh, again, if people want the green room back, we'll bring the green room back. It's all That's it's okay. all good. Um, so, again, I've been in uh, hibernation for nine weeks and uh, there's still this kind of COVID thing going on. But. Everyone's now talking about return to office. I actually went to an office. I went to the Crestron office for the first oh, time yeah. yesterday to pick up my laptop and all the rest of it. And it did seem kind of alien to me, but but we did go in. We did join a team school. We did share content. Um, tell us what you're seeing at Wayne House with regards to what's going on with return to work and return to office. And again, I know you've got some great insights and sides around this. So again, yeah. just tell us what's going on. Hey, let me do this. In, in case people are not familiar with Wayne House, let me just give a yeah, quick please. overview so people understand that. So if you're not familiar with Wayne House, uh, we are an analyst firm that focuses exclusively on enterprise communication. So while other uh, research firms may have a, a group or division that focuses on UC, uh, our entire company focuses on that. Now, the area I focus on, we call group collaboration or room-based collaboration and services. And so you can think about the the technologies, the devices, and the services that enable employees to communicate to each other, to collaborate, and to be productive with work. So that's that's the overview for that. But cool. yeah, it's really interesting that you talk about the return to work. And uh, people are starting to finally catch on to something that we've been talking on for a while. Um, it's this interesting dynamic where going back into the office in some ways is more challenging than uh, going – than Leaving. Was like, the evacuation, oh. yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Think about it. What took place, right? I mean, put put yourself in context. What what took place here? Um, you and I have been in the industry for a while. Our other guest has been in for a while. We we're, we we're gonna talk about that in a minute. <laughs> the old men stories. But <laughs> we were at a point in time prior to the pandemic where uh, a meeting looked like this, right? There were six, seven people around a table in a room. The meeting mm. took place in a room, and you had somebody on a wall, and they were the virtual guests. They were the ones peering into the meeting and what was taking place. Then came the great evacuation. We all had to go work from home and things uh, transitioned, right? So they transitioned to one box, one head. The meeting was no longer in a room. The meeting was virtualized and we were all peering in on that room, right? On that, on that meeting experience. And for the most part, as we got through our learning curves, especially people new to video, we had equal access. You know, we, we, were, we could see everything that was on the same screen. We could hear everything. We can view the content in the same way. It was it was an equal experience in, in that sort. Hybrid work is kind of throwing that back on its, on its head again, because what's taking place is now you have people going back into the office and it's not just one box, one head. It's now one box, three heads, one mm. box, four heads. And you have this challenge of trying to make sure those people who are still trying to peer into a virtualized meeting 
have equal access to the audio, the video, the content, and these things taking on. So it's really creating this interesting dynamics of of um, what is the best place to to, to get work done, right? Mm. And it's interesting. Again, obviously, when when people were in the office, you know, the the rooms were set up. You had the kind of dedicated video systems. But then, when everybody then started to go from home, it was a real enabler. It was a great training session for everybody that everyone learned to use the tools. You know, the the HR person, the the marketing person, all then suddenly had to learn how to use Teams or Zoom or whatever platform, right. and and became overnight superstars in in using the these collaboration tools. But yeah. now, when they go back into the office again, they're used to driving the experience through the laptop. That's what they've been doing for the last 18 months, two years, going yeah. into their, their calendar, clicking join and, you know, a browser opening up or an application opening up and being transported into that uh, that call. How does that dynamic change? And again, when you've got these different call control platforms throughout the day, change the dynamic for the meeting room of the future for, for businesses to be able to to create these tools for, for bring your own meeting and bring your own device as people go back in. What are you seeing around that? Yeah. Let, let me even start off with some some statistics behind your opening statement, how new people have been introduced to this idea of video conferencing and video meetings. Um, from the numbers we tracked, we've been tracking what we call monthly active users. You now hear people like Microsoft and Zoom talking like that more publicly, but we've tracked that for a long time. These are paid licenses that we've been tracking. Um, in the last three years, from 2019 to the end of 2021, we estimate there's been a 420% increase in the number of monthly active users. It went from, in 2019, from about 38,000 users to about 160 to 170,000 right now. And you're right, it's it's the people that aren't traditionally on there. It's the it's the accounting group, it's the marketing group, it's you know, other people. And they have to do these workflows that they weren't used to before, now over video, right? Mm -hmm. I, I have my staff meeting, I wanna check in, I'm filling out a form, I need to ask someone a question, and video winds up being an important way to probably, an easy way to do this, right? So um, go back to your question again. You were saying, how is that changing now in terms of the context of, of getting back into the meeting in the workflows? Yeah, and, and again, I think the other thing is, is that, again, how do you get people to come back into the office? You know, people are now uh -huh. comfortable at home. You know, they've got their setup at home. They've got their camera, their mic, their, their keyboard, their mouse, and the PC, a laptop set up with the screens. Right. How do you bring them back? You know, how do you change the meeting spaces? You know, what environments do you have to create? And what tools do you have to give them so that they want to come back into the meeting room and feel that they're, they're getting a, a better experience by going back into the office than going, well, I, why, why would I go right. back in the office? I, I've got everything set up here at home. So what, what are you're we now right. seeing on that? This is how people work now. I mean, people know their laptop. I get the right view of it here. Yeah. That this is how they experience of what a meeting looks like. You're right. We're back to that one head, one box, and I can control everything. And frankly, I can sit in the background and I can do some work or I can do some other things as well, too, as I'm listening to the meeting. But, the, but you're right. The, the key thing that's taking place is my point of contact, my point of management of what I'm seeing and hearing is taking place through those personal versions of those apps, right? Like you said, Teams, Zoom, um, frankly, it changes. And here's another great one too. I mean, wh when we done surveys, uh, we did a survey of North American, and Western European users, over two thirds said they're using more than one platform through the course of the day, right? right. The other thing which is really interesting is that of those 42% are using IT blessed platforms. So what I'm saying is IT is managing licenses for both Teams and Zoom. And these end users have to do it. So you're hitting one of those key parts. Here's the huge challenge. Workers not only in hybrid work need to figure out how to navigate moving from location to location, but even platform to platform, right? right. And the one common thing they wind up doing and seeing a lot is their laptop. I know how to work this. I know the applications on here. I know where to find my, you know, my content on my screen or, or what have you. Um, even if they are switching between different platforms, right? Zoom, Teams, WebEx, whatever it might be, du jour. So um, it, it's a really interesting challenge. How do you make people comfortable with moving from home to a commute experience to a work experience and still be productive and feel like they're getting good output? Very cool. And um, what are you seeing with regards to the actual spaces themselves again we used to have the the yeah, long ball bowling room table you know everyone used to go to the meeting room one or whatever big tellies at the front yeah. long table camera it, 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 are we looking at you know being more kind of open these kind of like uh, informal spaces drop downs like virtual water coolers 
how are the spaces change? How are the environments changing? What have you seen yeah. around that research? You guys actually have a great image at Crestron about this, which which uh, you guys have been nice enough to let me use in some presentations. Um, prior to the pandemic, there was a lot of things taking place in the real estate. A lot of it was really cost centric focus, right? People were trying to optimize real estate. We had open office spaces becoming more popular. Employers were like, my cube, I'm losing four feet, you know, <laughs> rebel. I hate it, but it's true. People were feeling encroached on and it was under the guise of open office space. Now to accommodate that, some of the practices that have been brought in, one of the very popular ones was called activity based. Mm. Uh, uh, space planning. And it's something that that I, I think more people know about because it's got a new uh, push of, of life in it from what's taking place with hybrid work. So what's taking place back in the spaces now is you've got people coming into real estate offices that need to not only be cost efficient, but they now become a strategic assets for, for companies. And companies need to now be able to invest in these to make people able to work where they are and the type of work they're doing, right? Um, nice. When we were mapping to what um, the types of work that people are doing in the office, we really honed in on, on four different ideas in, in our research. Um, and this is, yeah, here's a great image of it. It's the idea of looking at concentration, collaboration, socialization, and education or learning. And, and I think you know examples of these. Concentration is the heads down work, right? Collaborations in the room work. Socialization is, I see you in the hallway or in the kitchenette area, or I see you in the cafe, and we're still interacting, and there's still some creativity taking place. And education, frankly, isn't just the person in front of a classroom teaching to one person. Education is that bowling alley experience you just talked about, right? One person doing a presentation, 15 people listening and absorbing the information. It's a one-to-many scenario. But What's taken place is hybrid work is in the way that the offices spaces are changing is the ratios of what we're doing in the office changes, right? So prior to COVID, most people went to work, the office to work. And so concentration was a much higher activity over things like socialization or collaboration. But today with hybrid work in the way that spaces are being used, um, people are going to the office for different reasons. They're going there to collaborate. They're going there to socialize and socialize isn't just happy hour on Friday. This is connected <laughs> to the brand. It's connecting to the company. It's 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 part of people and an important part of what's taking place in the workforce is feeling a sense of identity with the company, right? Um, you see companies talking a lot about their ESG strategies, right? Environmental, social, and, and uh, uh, governance strategies. Socialization is the idea that I'm connecting with the people and the company and the brands and the products, and that's what's taking place. So this this is this is a big change that's taking place, and the spaces are responding to that. So what do you have? You've got stand up spaces. You've got soft scape spaces. You've got spaces that you might walk up that are reservable. You might spaces you walk up that are unreservable, right? That take place. Um, you have signage in the lobbies that people have access to that's interactive to get them around the space or not. Or you are you know you have the traditional huddle rooms. In fact, what you also wind up having too is an increase. It seems to be in what some people refer to as touchdown rooms or focus rooms. Yeah, no one wants to huddle anymore. No one wants to yeah, huddle. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, beyond beyond the social implications, um, one of the space consolidation things that's taking place is is shared desk, right? Hoteling or hot desk, and mm. we won't get into that much, but your viewership is is well informed about that. But that is driving the need for I still need to go close the door somewhere and have a private meeting or a private call sometimes. And it's just me or maybe me and one other person. And so those small spaces become important, too. But at the same point in time, I'm sitting side by side with the desk. I, I, I and I want to do that, that combination of collaboration slash socialization. I might take full advantage of a monitor or screen or something that's in, in the open space. Right. It could be a hallway. It can be a foyer. It could be something that allows me to capture information, share information, or move from there. Yeah, and again, you're bringing your own device, you're, you're using that uh, that equipment, but you're driving the experience from your laptop, right. your 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 world that you've been living in for the, the last hour long. Uh, amazing, interesting stuff. Uh, uh, where can people go to hook up with you and find more information uh, around this? Where's the best place to, to hook up with you and to find out more? Oh, this is the marketing pitch. I wasn't ready for that. Okay. Uh, okay. <laughs> so, uh, 
Well, Wayne House Research is www.waynehouse.com, and they, they can find us there. Uh, you can follow me on LinkedIn at uh, forward slash Craig Durr or at Craig Durr on, on Twitter, too. I'm not as prolific as, as some people are, such as yourself, but I, I do post some interesting things out there, and I think they're worth connecting to. Oh, here's another one, too. Um, if anyone happens to be going to Enterprise Connect mm. uh, in, this, uh, in the U.S. Uh, here in the upcoming weeks or two, I'll I be doing be. a presentation there. No, I'm, I'm sorry. Not yeah, no. Uh, ISC. That's okay. Yeah, yeah, we'll see that. I'll, I'll be at ISC too. I'm not necessarily, I don't know if I'm doing a presentation there, but at Enterprise Connect, there'll be a chance and we'll talk about hybrid work and the new uh, focus of stake, new stakeholders that are really kind of helping to drive what's needed there. It's not just IT, there's facilities, there's HR and, and line of business leaders, people that are happy to get these people in and out of the office. Um, I have a team of 20. I need to, how do I make sure they're, they're on in together and they're coordinating and they're social, you know, collaborating and being productive, these okay. type of things. Now, now you promised you're going to come back and we're going to do a, a, a bit of a, a toy shop because, because you get all of the cool toys. So um, we're going to get you back on, on another future episode and we're going to go through your toy cupboard of all the cool tech. So there's well, spoiler alert. You guys have a cool toy that you're going to be sharing here. Yeah, a okay. There's, there's, a, there's a spoiler alert. Um, uh, hang fire there. Uh, let me uh, cross over. So you've heard about the opportunity. You've heard what's going on in the industry from Craig there and the great research that Wayne House have been doing. And again, lots more reading and, and information you can go and find out at waynehouse.com. But how at Crestron, uh, you know, leading the charge is how are we going to change the conversation? What are we doing to enable those businesses to enable those users and to uh, embrace that return to the office and enhance that return to the office with all of those challenges and the changes that Craig talked about. Let's bring out uh, another old friend of mine, a good friend of mine, uh, and uh, talk about some, some great innovations that are happening literally now, hot off the press here at Crestron. Uh, Mr. Sam Kennedy. Hello, sir. How are you doing? <laughs> I'm doing excellent. How are you? It's so good. To, it's like getting the old band back together. Um, yeah, it's so, so, great. so, so cool. great to work with you again. <laughs> so and uh, Craig, and Craig, yeah, we, we're all uh, we're all uh, being at the same place at the same time. So uh, tell me, because I've seen videos already. Again, I, the first week here at Crestron, uh, and I've already seen some amazing videos. We're going to show a bit later on, but there is an announcement. There's a new launch coming out uh, this this week, I believe. Now. One of the reasons I joined Crestron is because of it's not just around, you know, video conferencing and you see with the, 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 the flex rooms and the MTRs, but there's such an amazing wide breadth of solutions. And one of the really cool parts that I saw was around the kind of content, the collaboration, the, air, the wireless content sharing. Now, we've worked on those kind of products before, but they were going to never really develop to their fullest potential. Crestron launched Air Media back in 2014, I think it was. And we're just about to release version three. Tell us about the story. Tell us about the history. And tell us about what version three of Air Media is going to bring for our partners and our customers here in the market. So first off, again, great to have you here at Crestron. We're really excited. Uh, and again, I'm new just like you. And part of the reason, I, just like you, one of the reason I think that uh, uh, we're, I'm excited to be at Crestron is that we really truly provide more than anyone else in the in the world that end-to-end -end set of devices and, and applications for the room, right? We are the only ones that truly can claim that we provide end-to-end -end solutions for the rooms. Um, now, what we're really excited about launching this week is a new device called the Air Media 3. So this is our our, our newest version of the Air Media, and it really aligns to where Craig was talking about in that new way of working. So not only does it do what uh, the Air Media has done for a very long time and making it very easy to share content, there's really three key new features that are we're, we're taking this to the new level to a new level. So first off, um, it is more of an advanced uh, content gateway. So it allows for up to four, initially four participants to be able to share content simultaneously, okay. and we do that in the way that's very consumer friendly, right? A lot of people that are working at, or that, that have been at home, their workflow when they wanna share content is, they, at least for me, when I sit on the couch and I wanna show pictures that have been taken off my iPhone, I use AirPlay, or I send it to my Apple TV. Well, that same workflow works to share content in the enterprise. And so um, we could do AirPlay, Miracast, we have our own app, um, you could do wired content. So there's a lot of different ways to share content. And now we'll be able to do that with up to four. Eventually, we're, we're, we're making a goal of up to nine participants wow. 
simultaneously sharing content, but we're starting with four. I think that's great because you can have the agenda up there, you can have you know the, the the project plan up there, and you can be ticking things off, going through. And again, when you've got multiple people in that in that call, again, you're going to have the the meeting organizer, the project manager, the the, the deliverable you know elements of it. So having those different feeds in there, it's not just okay. Let's look at the PowerPoint presentation, but again, let's check off the agenda. Right, we covered that bit off. Let's now go on to the next step. How are we doing on the project plan? Is that going to move things in or out, or all that kind of stuff? So I love that. And and how many meetings have we all been in where it's can you stop sharing content yeah. so that I <laughs> yeah. can start sharing yeah, content? Man, yeah. Right. It just is. It's a much simpler, more more user friendly approach to to sharing content. So enabling multiple people to share simultaneously is a, is a, important. Hmm. Um, the second major feature of the new air media is the ability to leverage the device as a digital signage player. Nice. So the big shift of what we're doing with the new air media is building it as a platform so that okay. we can run different applications on the device. And one of the first things that we're going to be doing is this digital signage application. So you can think of yeah, in a normal conference room when we're not collaborating, maybe we want to send some branding, maybe we want to send instructions, yep. maybe we want to send safety evacuation whatever. information, yeah, you know, where exactly. the fire escapes are or whatever, yeah. So in the more traditional sense, it leverages this, this device to be more than just a collaboration device, allows me all that capability of a digital signage player. But in the non-traditional sense, like Craig was saying, People are going to start as they get back to the office. They're going to work wherever they need to, wherever they want to. That they're, I'm going to be in my meeting room, and then I'm going to go to lunch, and maybe in the cafeteria where I'm having, where I have monitors, and I may be doing some digital signage in there. Maybe the, the idea strikes us when we're all, you know, breaking bread with each other and we're eating. And we're like, you know what? Wouldn't it be great if I did this? And then I can send content to the air media in a non-traditional space. So it's not only I think of this as a if it's a normal conference room, it's a it's a collaboration device first and then digital signage player second. But I think for the non-traditional places, it may be a digital signage player first and then a collaboration device second. So it really starts to enable us to truly work where enables the users to work where they want to work, when they want to do it. And we're not just saying that, right? I think that's like a buzz buzz term that a lot of our the industry is talking about but we're truly delivering on that type of experience so yeah, again, enabling this, we have i know we have a case study on our website uh with a customer who's literally doing is putting these in in cafeteria so to enable their users to do this it goes back to what craig was saying you know those different those four different spaces you know those socializing spaces you know the learning spaces the collaboration spaces you know that that's where work is happening now it's not that big bowling room alley meeting room you know that we all were used to pre-covid it is now these new flexible spaces you know the as he said the entrance hall or you know the the the, the virtual water coolers or whatever they are again those are the spaces where the ideas are happening the collaboration is happening and, and where people are, are putting this stuff together so okay so there's two down hit me with the third yeah, Come on. Uh, so the third one and i this one i think is the most exciting one is wireless conferencing or oh, okay. bring your own meeting so to both of your guys point of the users wanting to leverage their laptop in a meeting in a meeting room, um, we're enabling this capability that if I take the air media with all the capabilities for for digital signage and wireless conferencing or uh, wireless content sharing, if I have a microphone camera speaker connected to this device, okay. what I'm able to do is if I pair my PC or my Mac to this device, I can then pass through those microphones, camera speakers wirelessly. To my personal device. So if you think of the workflow as I walk into the conference room with my PC or my Mac, I may need to connect to Zoom one call, Teams the next, WebEx, Google Meet, FaceTime, right? You name it, right? Yeah, yeah. Users need to be able to connect to whatever. Craig, Craig, Craig called it out. Yeah. Right? That most users need to connect to what, three a day, I think yeah. is what. Well, those non IT right? sanctioned platforms that they're all using. That and he most, yeah, almost high. I mean, what a great number. 42% of organizations are paying for both. I mean, what a <laughs> crazy statistic. But um, we know everybody needs to connect to everything all the time, right? That's the. the that's the, the, the problem statement. And so the idea is that what we're doing is we're enabling the users to leverage their personal device and passing through that great audio and video. So you take, you take the air media that does all that great applications built as a platform. I connect my laptop or my Mac to it, connect on my Mac 
to my uh, to my Google Meet, my Teams, my Zoom, and then I'm able to leverage the microphones, cameras, and speakers here. So it really matches up that workflow that users are looking for. That it, and with the flexibility, maybe pun intended or not pun intended, but it enables the flexibility that a dedicated uh, dedicated uh, Kodak or traditional video conferencing system cannot provide. Right now, of course, I could combine the two. Of course, I could take an AirMedia and connect it to a Flex, and so then I get the best of both worlds. Yeah, yeah. But but you know, on its own, it really enables that next generation use case. I love that. Yeah, and there's obviously lots of vendors out there that have you know USB camera camera bars, you know, that you can put into a meeting room. But you've then got to run a USB cable for the camera for the mic and the audio. Then you've got to run an HDMI cable for the screen output. You know, so you've got the user has to come in and kind of plug in two cables. And you know, again, there's a whole bunch of you know. COVID on the cables and all that kind of stuff. You're, you're telling me that we can literally go into a meeting room with my laptop. I can wirelessly connect up to this air media, which has got already a mic and a camera hooked up to that and wirelessly bring those cameras to my laptop as peripherals for whatever application I want to use on my, my local PC. That's that's the experience. I think we actually have a video that- uh, Yeah, that let's, 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 let's roll that in now. Now, let me show you how easy this is. So what you're seeing on my is my laptop right now, and I'm running the Crestron app, and I'm gonna connect wirelessly to the Air Media. Now, many of you would be familiar with this experience because this is how you're sharing content today. So once I'm able to, once I'm connected to the screen, you're able to see my content, what's on my laptop on the screen behind me. Now, what you'll notice is there's a new button there that says start. And once I click the start button, what will happen now is the camera, microphone, and speakers that's in our bar that's connected to the Air Media back there is now being transferred to my laptop. So when I go into my Teams call, and I'm going to go into a scheduled meeting that I have with Julie, when I click the join meeting, what's going to do is it's going to pop up my Teams client, and it's going to take that microphone, camera, speakers, and I am now leveraging that. So when I click the join now button, I am now connecting into the meeting. We now see Julie, hey Julie, and we're passing that microphone camera speakers through. So it's really seamless. That's so awesome. It's it's so easy as, as you can see there to be able to connect this stuff up. And one of, again, the, the things that I really love about Crestron is the fact that, you know, it's not just a device, you know, there are other content sharing devices out there. Yeah, we, we've all been used to them, you know, in, in previous lives, but they would just stand alone. You know, we always used to get asked about from customers, well, what happens with regards to power saving? You know, can if I switch this off or the monitor goes into power saving, how do I see the instructions? The fact that Crestron can bring uh, occupancy sensing, we can control the screen. It's got RS-232 to control the, the screen to this. So when someone walks into the room, it can light up the screen, come up with digital signage to say, if you want to, you know, join a call, this is how you do it with those instructions. And then when you walk out the room, it all goes into power saving great green credentials you know the fact of that true end-to-end -end experience rather than just oh it's a content sharing box that you plug in to your screen and none of it just it's all just cobbled together and none of it actually kind of works together as a, a cohesive solution love that so this is air media three uh all, it, all by the way managed by xio yes and sorry god i'm new i'm the new guy here sorry <laughs> yeah, we'll get you there don't yeah. worry right <laughs> It, but uh, it, right, the, the fact that this falls in line with everything else that Crestron's doing and, and that, you know, we truly own the, the room, right? We mm. deliver the whole solution for the room like no other. Like you said, there's a lot of pointed products out there, but no one but Crestron can provide that full, complete solution and that full, automated, simplified, consistent experience uh, amongst every room within an organization. Love that. And so tell me, so Air Media 3 is announced. This week, this half the press uh, available now. Uh, is it just keep me available honest. now? The, some of the software for the capabilities uh, will begin uh, in the next month or so. Very, very cool, uh, Sam. Th you're going to be back. I, uh, you're going to be a regular guest. I have a feeling uh, yes. <laughs> it's going to be great, uh, Sam. Thank you ever so much, Craig. Thank you ever so much, and thank you ever so much for joining us here on the first uh, first ever Crest TV uh, show that we're going to be putting out. This is going to be a regular show. We're going to try and put it out on a weekly cadence. We're going to get a date. We're going to get a time. We'll sort all that out, but we wanted to get this one hot off the press with this Air Media launch. Air Media is no longer just a wireless collaboration tool for wireless sharing, but now brings you that bring your own device, bring your own meeting solution to wirelessly bring the camera, the microphone, the speakers, the digital signage, and the wireless content sharing 
to your laptops to allow those users to go in and embrace these spaces to do these types of, uh, of, of new types of working um, wherever they are. So check it out, go to crestron.com, check out all the great updates around Air Media, and I will see you uh, on the next Crest TV. Give us your comments, give us your feedback, and let us know uh, what you'd like to see on future episodes. Uh, stay safe, and I'll catch you on the next one.